major events this week, central transit stargates, stock exchange lines, and communication channels were flooded with activity as the major alliances went to war. Disavowed leadership declared war against Cygnus Alliance by setting their fleets to attack the Cygnus fortress, Volna, in coordinated effort. Sources report that the first actual battle of this new war took place in the skies above planet Agus in the Orion Arm, which is governed by Centurion from the Animal House Alliance. Animal House representatives reported their astonishment at the personal nature of the attack by the Cygnus officer at the FET, especially since Animal House forces were still assembling for the war at the time. Other officers and representatives were quick to note that the first combat of the war was of a personal nature against forces that had yet to move against the Cygnus Alliance. However, the first victory of the war was when disavowed forces landed at the Cygnus Fortress Volna and captured it without resistance. Cygnus faced strong opposition as Animal House forces attacked their Ketrao Fortress. Though they inflicted serious damage, Animal House forces could not breach the Cygnus lines completely during either attack. Refusing to give up, Animal House persistence paid off and they finally captured the Cygnus Fortress of Ketrao, giving high praises to their member Trontu as the hero of the final engagement. Cygnus forces took another serious loss as their final fortress Baal fell to order of Andros forces. Witnesses report that the fortress guardians comprised of minimal numbers, but were led by the Cygnus commander Viper 24 himself in a valiant attempt to defend their holdings. This was a moment of great pride for the Order of Andros Alliance as it had been the first to defeat the galaxy's number one flagship, which was commanded by Viper 24. In a shot to the ego of another Cygnus member, Sluria, from the Order of Andros, was pleased to report the destruction of planets belonging to Derbs as in answer to his bragging that his territories were untouched. As disavowed forces moved openly against the Cygnus Alliance at the beginning of the war, Animal House moved against Cygnus allies, the Red Tiger Alliance. This new alliance, comprised mostly of Black Horizon refugees, had risen in numbers and territorial holdings quickly. Unknown at the time, however, the Red Tiger Alliance had recently suffered a failure in the confidence of player GN01's leadership after ties to former Black Horizon commander, Horizons, and his own status were made public. Frustrated Red Tiger governors were being united by Darcy for action, and when the war came to their doorstep, they were quick to leave the Alliance. This action left the Red Tiger Alliance to its own corruption while freeing 15 disgruntled governors to seek greener pastures. Animal House forces, as they had done with the previous war, did not pursue former Red Tiger members as that was well beyond the scope of their military goals. Animal House fleets were happy to give Darcy and the other separatists well wishes and plenty of room as the fleets pass each other en route to various targets. When asked to comment, Andros, commander of Disavowed, had this to say. I noticed the movement of Cygnus within Sagittarius, and was quite alarmed by their numbers. It was decided action must be taken. Vulner Fortress was very easily taken, we caught them by surprise. Felcor, from the entity, was reached when asked about the Alliance's involvement. Due to the war we have to wait and see before we indulge our war plans. During some intense conversations held by multiple Alliance representatives, commanders, and officials, over public channels, various issues over the war came to light. Cygnus Alliance representatives maintained claims of being backstabbed by various others while planning to cripple Animal House. Disavowed and Order of Andros representatives seemed to indicate there was indeed a plan behind closed doors of Alliance leadership circles, but that it wasn't ever intended to ultimately support Cygnus Alliance. Confirming the long-standing assumption of non-aligned public commentators, Disavowed stood firm on its alliance with Animal House to solidify power in the galaxy between allies. Finally being reached for comment, the buffet of this to say, It was a great plan. Dang Irish. Andros F me hard. Stuck it in and twisted it. For the statistical daily progress of the war over the last few days, here are the reports.
At the conclusion of these public discussions, everyone was shocked to hear the final words of the Cygnus officer Boba Fett. It's my fault this war took place and I hereby resign my position in Cygnus. This effectively halted the onslaught while various factions sought confirmation of the very unexpected news. As one of the representatives put it, It was odd. Imagine being in the middle of a Spartan battle and then everyone on all sides stop mid-swing when you hear that record-scratching sound, and then seeing everyone staring at the one guy in the middle. And as another witness said, It was like shouting pi is exactly three, at a math nerd convention. Shortly after that, after the resignation was confirmed, the war was more or less concluded. What promised to be the largest war the galaxy had yet seen was cut short by unexpected individuals taking unexpected responsibility for their actions. While not considered a war anymore, there are continuous border skirmishes between multiple alliances with the remnants of Cygnus Alliance. Though not taking a prominent role in the early battles, the entity forces moved against Cygnus as well, shattering the fleets that have yet remained or that have just come out of space docks. Darkling, from the entity, commented on the war. The other alliances rallied together in an unprecedented attack force. The combined strength of such alliances across the factions have created a superpower that will be a force to reckon with. Anonymous comment. One day I looked at the fortresses and the alliances that controlled them and noticed Cygnus had been completely annihilated, when the day before they had owned two fortresses. I'm glad to see Cygnus lose its place as number two. Harkinian, from the end of the alliance, we didn't join the war at the start, but we chose our actions carefully. When the commands were issued, the end of the alliance moved as a whole. It was a proud moment indeed. We met with little resistance, striking hard and fast. Our losses were very few. In other news, the public networks have recorded several changes in local politics regarding the commander's seat for several alliances. Cygnus Alliance itself, after losing much of its holdings and its primary officer, tended to the ceremonies ushering in Turbs as the new alliance commander, replacing the prominent status relinquished by Viper 24. The Stars Alliance celebrated the return of its former commander, Jason, as he returned to power in the Alliance. Sonny Ban, who had held the alliance together in the interim, is expected to return to his former role as a high-ranking officer in the Stars Alliance network. In the Federation Alliance, there is a great deal of speculation as to the organization's stability as there has been yet another change in the leadership roles. With no public details beyond the changes themselves, stockholders are left to wonder why Escalade stepped down from commander, only to have Stryker pass on leadership to yet another within Federation ranks. For now, Otto is the commander of the Alliance, but stocks and interests are unsure about the new change, to say the least. Alliance memberships have shifted with the recent wars, but some members of note have shifted through many alliances. Horizons, the former commander of the Black Horizon Alliance, was thrown out of the Order of Andros. He was unable to be reached for comment on specific details. At present, he now resides within the ranks of the Disavowed Alliance. While Animal House representatives refused to comment, it was clear they seemed to be amused at the absurdity of the situation. Elsewhere in the galaxy, population troubles within the territory of certain governors have raised serious questions about forethought and civilization planning. Governor Dylan 314 made headlines again as his complaints about population growth led to an inquest into the problem. Over almost before it began, the Inquisitors returned with a report. Unwilling to comment directly about the situation, the phrase, giant horror, were muttered frequently. Upon independent investigation, it seems that the governor had neglected to populate his planets with anything other than female swimsuit models. LMGN Special Public Service Announcement Several governors have complained about the presence of rude GMs in the game chat window. This is nothing more than the work of trolls having fun with people, yet still remains a very dangerous joke as impersonating GMs is a bannable offense. These trolls use the spacebar to make it look like a GM is speaking on the next line. The easiest way to deal with this is to widen your chat window, as this troll trick only works with the standard window size. This has been your Galactic News Broadcast. Good hunting.